I'm Casey and I'm a third year PhD researcher here at the University um, and as well as part of the Health Life Engineering Group. Um, I'm supervised by Christina Anderson here uh, and also Amira Fernando who looks uh, into medical and um, compassion uh, arts. So I know a lot of this stuff in especially yesterday it was kind of focused on bespoke. Uh, so not really much doesn't necessarily uh, focus on the spoke garments, but um, still uh, focuses on achieving accurate uh, garment fit through the use of 3D body scanning. So I really aim to develop a methodology for the sizing of compression garments for uh, younger females. Um, there's currently no theory to underpin the process. Um, so what often happens is that custom covers and product developers um, use their experience or traditional um, custom covering uh, grading methods. So accurate fit is really important for garments to be able to function. Um, so they have to be tight enough to the body to put pressure um, on the skin and the underlying tissue to promote uh, physiological benefits and uh, to be explained. Um, so I'm trying to improve on the current methods used by compression brands um, by targeting their uh, consumer of like the athletic female. Um, I would say that athletic females are probably more than consumer than the general public just due to the expense of the garments um, and the uh, functionality of garments as well. Um, there is also no interdisciplinary research um, into this area, um, so I try to adopt more of an interdisciplinary approach with my research, um, looking at various areas that I think are really important um, to be able to engineer these garments. So I have looked into mechanical um, behaviour of these fabrics pressure measurements, 3D and body, body scanning, um, and sizing and engraving methodologies. Um, so I'll just explain just a couple of studies that I've been working on throughout my PhD um, that use the 3D and body, body scanning. So first was uh, looking at movement considerations. Um, so compression garments are created to be worn during movements, however there aren't any studies that look into how body changes during movements and how we can implement this information into compression garment development. Um, so as the body moves, the muscles contract, which changes the dimensions of that area. Um, so during contraction, the muscle expands and this increases the strain on the fabric and therefore increases the interface pressures. Um, so this study aims to quantify how much the muscles um, can perform and vary during movements so that adjustments can be made to patterns or to the um, fabric in order to try and maintain adequate pressures so that you um, will always be getting benefits but also um, that the pressure will never get too high that they're actually causing any damage to the body. Uh, 3D body, uh, 3D body scanning was also used in the study to capture functional uh, postures and also dynamic postures. So functional is still um, static but in various different um, poses like the one on the screen um, and the dynamic is actually capturing um, stills during an actual movement. Um, so I wanted to test whether 4D uh, body scanning could provide more accurate measurement data for use in pattern development. Um, so when the body is in functional postures, it's um, using certain muscles um, to hold itself in a position that it might not actually be uh, during movement. Um, so I wanted to see whether the measurement that came out of the 4D scans could possibly be more accurate um, than the 3D scans. And um, so whilst capturing the functional and dynamic clusters and um, does help um, my research, uh, scan software isn't really ready uh, 
for this, so you can't actually now uh, automatically extract measurements from functional or dynamic scans um, in software. So I have been working with um, Harold Donald, who is um, a part of the ICT Standards Association. She works um, with the Rhino 3D and RAM software um, to try and create coding in order to get uh, semi-automatic uh, measurements from um, scans that I could then use for the analysis. Um, and the second study um, is just looking at the differences between athletic and non-athletic bodies um, and how the athletic females are being catered for by the compression garment market. Um, so I think it's really important to understand the differences in order to be able to design and manufacture the garments and that are, they are fit for purpose. Um, so I looked at three different companies, their compression garments and also their size charts. Um, and I had 63 scans of athletic females. So these were women who did um, in excess of five hours of exercise per week. Um, so I conducted some analysis to see, um, based on the scan measurements, um, how each brand catered for uh, each individual, to see what sizes that they uh, would fall into. Um, so in general, the compression garments uh, didn't cater well for the athletic females. Um, it did very much differ between the brands, um, but around 44% of the women actually fell in between uh, the sizes for at least one of the brands. Um, only two women were able to choose the same size for each of their measurements 